Every now and then, we hear about the Israel and Palestine conflict. The conflict is there for the last so many years, and in spite of several efforts at international level, there is no solution to this problem. Whenever we hear about the conflict, we have many questions in our mind, like why this conflict, why it has not been resolved so far, etc., etc. This video will provide answers to many such questions that you have on Israel-Palestine. According to Hebrew Bible, Israel's origin can be traced back to Abraham, who is considered the father of both Judaism and Islam. Abraham's descendants were thought to be enslaved by the Egyptians for hundreds of years before settling in Canaan, which is approximately the region of modern-day Israel. King David ruled the region around 1000 BC and founded the Judean dynasty. He was succeeded by his son, King Solomon. Jerusalem was the capital of King David's Israel in the Hebrew Bible. David's son Solomon built first temple of God in Jerusalem, which was destroyed along with the entire city of Jerusalem by the Babylonians in 586 BC. In biblical times, Jewish people who could not make a pilgrimage to the city were supposed to pray in the direction of it. After Solomon's death, the ten northern tribes refused to submit to his son Rehoboam and revolted. In about 931 BC, the area was divided into two kingdoms, Israel in the north and Judah in the south. The Israelites formed their capital in the city of Samaria and the Judeans kept their capital in Jerusalem. These kingdoms remained separated states for over 200 years. Around 722 BC, the Assyrians invaded and destroyed the northern kingdom of Israel. Later in 568 BC, the Babylonians conquered Jerusalem. Palestine is derived from Philistia, which is the name given by Greek writers to the land of Philistines who occupied a small pocket of land between modern Tel Aviv, Yafo, and Gaza in the 12th century BC. The name was later revived by the Romans in 2nd century. The province of Judea was renamed Syria Palestina, later simply called Palestinia. The area of modern-day Israel was conquered and ruled for the next several centuries by various groups, including the Persians, Greeks, Romans, Arabs, Fatimids, Saljuk Turks, Crusaders, Egyptians, Mamelukes, Islamists, and others. And between 1517 and 1917, the Ottoman Empire, whose official religion was Islam, ruled the city. During First World War, British forces conquered Palestine from the Ottoman Turks in 1917, thereby ending 1400 years of Islamic rule over the region. After First World War, a system was established according to which the League of Nations was empowered to confer upon some of the victorious powers mandate to administer territories formerly ruled by Germany or the Ottoman Empire who were defeated in the First World War. Their Asian and African possessions, which were judged not yet ready to govern themselves, were distributed among the victorious Allied powers. Mandated territories were to be governed on behalf of the League till they become independent. On September 16, 1922, Council of League approved a mandate to Great Britain for Palestine, which includes modern-day Jordan and Israel, and also for Iraq. Turkish ruled Syria and Lebanon were given to France. British allowed Heshmite dynasty to administer region east of Jordan River called Transjordan. The region got full independence in 1946 and is now Jordan, Saudi Arabia and Iraq. British mandate over Palestine incorporated the Balfour Declaration of 1917, expressing support for the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people. It is important to note that Balfour Declaration was a letter from Arthur James Balfour, the British Foreign Secretary, the leaders of Anglo-Jewish community to establish Palestine a national home for the Jewish people. British mandate facilitated Jewish immigration from Europe to Palestine in the 1920s and 1930s. Jewish population in Palestine increased from 6% in 1918 to 33% in 1947. 
Arab demand for independence and resistance to immigration of Jews in Palestine led to a rebellion in 1937, which was followed by continuing terrorism and violence from both sides. UK considered various formulas to bring independence to a land ravaged by violence. In 1947, the UK turned the Palestine problem over to the UN. Following the end of Second World War, the newly formed United Nations proposed a plan that would grant 55% of historic Palestine to a Jewish state and 45% to Arabs. Jerusalem would remain under international control. As can be seen in the map, yellow portion was meant for Arabs and the orange one for Jews. Palestinians rejected the proposal because it stripped away much of the land that was under their control. During that time, they owned 94% of historic Palestine and comprised 67% of the population. This plan was never implemented on the ground. Israel proclaimed independence on 14 May 1948. Its independence was recognized by U.S. on the same day. However, the move triggered war with the Arabs with air attacks on Tel Aviv on the eve of 14 May. Israel's independence triggered the first Arab-Israeli war. Five Arab nations, Egypt, Jordan, Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon, immediately invaded the region. Zionist military forces expelled at least 750,000 Palestinians and captured 78% of historic Palestine. The remaining 22% was divided into the West Bank and Gaza Strip. Some important facts to note here are that the Zionist military was organized to combat the revolt of Palestinian Arab against the Jewish settlement in Palestine. Zionism is a Jewish nationalist movement with the goal to create a Jewish national state in Palestine, the ancient homeland of the Jews. Civil war broke out throughout all of Israel, but a ceasefire agreement was reached in 1949. As part of the temporary peace agreement, the West Bank became part of Jordan, and the Gaza Strip became Egyptian territory. Israel was admitted as 59th member of the United Nations on 11th May 1949. Some important facts are, the area of West Bank stretches along the eastern border of Israel, along the Dead Sea and West Bank of the Jordan River. That is why this area is known as West Bank. 1956 saw the second Arab-Israel war. The war was outcome of the Swiss crisis, which was provoked by American and British decision not to finance Egypt's construction of the Aswan High Dam on Nile. Egypt reacted to the American and British decision by declaring martial law in the canal zone and seizing control of the Swiss Canal Company, which was a British-French enterprise and owned and operated the Swiss Canal since its construction in 1869. When diplomatic efforts to settle the crisis failed, Britain and France prepared military action to regain control of the canal and overthrow Egypt president. During the same time, Israel was hostile towards Egypt because Egypt had blocked the Strait of Tehran at the mouth of the Gulf of Aqaba and the numerous raid by Egyptian-supported commandos into Israel during 1955 and 56. On 29th October 1956, Israel attacked the Sinai Peninsula. On November 5th and 6th, British and French forces landed at Port Said and Port Ford and began occupying the canal zone. The United Nations intervened on December 22nd and the UN evacuated British and French troops. Israeli forces withdrew in March 1957. Israel did not win freedom to use the canal, but it did regain the shipping rights in the Strait of Tehran. Egypt established Swiss Canal Authority in July 1956, owns, operates, and maintains the Swiss Canal. It was set up to replace Swiss Canal Company, which resulted in the Swiss crisis. Egypt finally built Aswan High Dam across the Nile in Aswan, Egypt, between 1960 and 1970. There were constant tension between Israel and its neighboring Arab countries, which was fueled by Soviet intelligence reports 
that indicated Israel was planning a military campaign against Syria, after which the President of Egypt mobilized forces in Sinai on May 14, 1967. May 18, he requested the removal of the United Nations Emergency Forces stationed there and on May 22, he closed the Gulf of Aqaba to Israeli shipping, thus instituting an effective blockade of the port city of Elad in southern Israel. Later, on May 30, the King Hussein of Jordan arrived in Cairo to sign a mutual defense pact with Egypt. On June 5th, Israel conducted airstrikes on Egypt and Syria. Jordanian forces began shelling West Jerusalem, which faced counterattack by Israeli forces on the same day. The United Security Council called for a ceasefire on June 7th that was immediately accepted by Israel and Jordan and by Syria on June 10th. During the Six-Day War, Israel took control of the Golan Heights from Syria, the West Bank from Jordan, and Gaza Strip and Sinai Peninsula from Egypt. Area in the map in light green color represents territories occupied by Israel during the Six-Day War. These areas were considered occupied by Israel and the status of these territories subsequently became a major point of contention in the Arab-Israeli conflict. Conflict created hundreds of thousands of refugees. More than one million Palestinians inhabited the occupied territories under Israeli rule. In November 1967, United Nations passed UN Resolution 242, which aimed at Israel's withdrawal from the territories it had captured in the war in exchange for lasting peace. This resolution became the basis for diplomatic effort for peace with the neighboring countries. In the meantime, Palestine Liberation Organization, an umbrella political organization representing the Palestinians was formed in 1964 to centralize the leadership of various unorganized Palestinian groups which were fighting for the same cause. Major PLO factions included Fatah, the Popular Front for Liberation of Palestine, the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine, and al sakia PLO was engaged in protracted guerrilla war against Israel during the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. Main agenda of PLO was to completely eliminate Israel's sovereignty in Palestine and the destruction of State of Israel. PLO came into prominence after the Six-Day War of June 1967. In 1969, Yasser Arafat, leader of Fatah, was named the PLO chairman. PLO organized and launched guerrilla attacks against Israel from its base in Jordan. Israeli retaliated to these attacks. PLO's attack on Israel led to conflict between PLO and government of King Hussein of Jordan in 1970, due to which PLO was expelled from the country by the Jordanian army in 1971. PLO then shifted its base to Lebanon and continued its attack on Israel. Arab heads of state recognized the PLO as the sole legitimate representative of all Palestinians in 1974. In 1976, PLO was admitted to full membership in the Arab League. After the Six Days War in 1967, there were years of intermittent fighting between Israel and neighboring countries. Egypt initiated talks for peaceful settlement in accordance with the United Nations Resolution 242. Israel rejected those terms and the fighting developed into a full-scale war in 1973. On the Jews' holy day of Yom Kippur, Egypt and Syria launched airstrikes against Israel. During this battle, Syria wanted to recapture the Golan Heights but was unsuccessful. The fighting lasted for two weeks and ended after UN adopted a resolution to stop the war. UN Resolution 338 was a three-line resolution which called upon all parties to cease hostilities within 12 hours and to implement UN Resolution 242, passed in 1967 in all its parts. In 1982, Israel invaded Lebanon to destroy the PLO and its bases. Israeli troops surrounded the Lebanese capital of Beirut, which was PLO's headquarter for several years. After negotiations, PLO forces evacuated Beirut and shifted to other Arab countries. 
In 1978, U.S. President Jimmy Carter mediated the discussions between Israeli Prime Minister Menachem Begin and Egyptian President Anwar Sadat. After several days of negotiation, Israel agreed to withdraw from Sinai Peninsula and Egypt promised to establish normal diplomatic relations between the two countries and also agreed to open the Swiss Canal to Israeli ships. Agreements were signed on September 17, 1978, and it was the first treaty between Israel and any of its Arab neighbors. Some interesting facts to note here are, Sadat and Begin were awarded the Nobel Prize for Peace in 1978 for their contributions to the agreements. Arab was suspended from the Arab League on 26 March 1979 after signing the agreement and was reinstated as a member of the Arab League in 1989. These negotiations are popularly known as Camp David Accord because the negotiations took place at the U.S. presidential retreat at Camp David, Maryland. Israel's intensified expansion and interest in the West Bank and Gaza Strip led to first intifada in December 1987 by Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza Strip. Mm -hmm. Objective of the intifada or uprising was to end Israel's occupation of territories in West Bank and Gaza Strip and also to create an independent Palestinian state. On 15 November 1988, the PLO announced creation of State of Palestine, kind of government in exile. And on April 2nd, 1989, Mr. Yasser Arafat was elected as the president. PLO recognized United Nations Resolution 242 and 338. Government in exile is a government temporarily established on foreign soil following the occupation of its own territory by another authority. United Nations Resolution 242, adopted on November 22, 1967, after six days' war, called on the Arab states to accept Israel's right to live in peace within secure and recognized boundaries, free from threats or acts of force. And United Nations Resolution 338 called for an act to the Yom Kippur War of 1973. Resolution was adopted on October 22, 1973, and it called upon all parties to cease hostilities within 12 hours and to implement UN Resolution 242 in all its parts. The first intifada ended in September 1993 with the signing of the first Oslo Accord, which provided a framework for negotiation between Israel and Palestinians. The agreements aimed at mutual recognition and set out conditions under which the West Bank and Gaza would be gradually handed over to the newly formed Palestinian Authority. The transfer was to be completed over a five-year interim period after negotiations between both the sides. Negotiations failed throughout the 90s and collapsed completely during the outbreak of Second Intifada. In the meantime, Hamas was founded in 1987 which is a militant Palestinian nationalist and Islamist movement in the West Bank and Gaza Strip. Hamas was formed with the objective to establish an independent Islamic state in historical Palestine. Hamas opposed the secular approach of the Palestine Liberation Organization to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. United Nations and European Union have designated Hamas a terrorist organization because of its armed resistance against Israel. Palestinians launched suicide bombs and other attacks on Israelis in 2000. Israeli troops stormed Al-Aqsa Mosque compound in the occupied East Jerusalem on September 28, 2000. Many such incidents led to the Second Intifada, also known as Al-Aqsa Intifada. Israeli army launched Operation Defensive Shield to reoccupy the West Bank and parts of Gaza and started building a separation barrier in the West Bank to match a similar barrier erected in Gaza in 1996. Unrest lasted for five years until a ceasefire was reached, as a result of which Israel announced a plan to remove all troops and Jewish settlements from the Gaza Strip by the end of 2005. 
Mahmoud Abbas, a senior member of Fatah and the first prime minister of the Palestinian Authority, was elected to head the PLO after the death of Arafat in November 2004. He was subsequently elected president of the Palestinian Authority as well. Hamas, which first came to fore during the first Intifada, gained popularity and contested the 2006 election for the Palestinian Authority's legislative body and won the majority of its seats, thereby challenging the PLO's dominance within Palestinian society. Tension between PLO and Hamas surfaced in 2007 and Hamas established its control in Gaza Strip after an armed confrontation. PLO then dissolved the legislature led by Hamas and re-established the PLO's government in Ramallah in West Bank. No peace negotiation after 2008 undermined the Oslo Accords that had legitimized the PLO within the West Bank and Gaza Strip. Palestinian Authority continued with the unilateral campaign for the international recognition of statehood. Meanwhile, Israel continued to build Jewish settlements in the West Bank. On 29 November 2012, UN granted non-member observer state status to Palestine, after which new round of negotiations began in 2013. But was suspended by Israel in April 2014 when Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas formed alliance with Hamas. Unity agreement was reached between Abbas Fateh Moment, the dominant group in the PLO, which governs part of the West Bank, and Hamas, which controls the Gaza Strip. Israel considers Hamas a terrorist organization that aims for the destruction of Israel. Since Second Intifada, there have been several conflict and also initiatives to ensure peace between Israel and Palestine. In 2014, conflict between Israel and Hamas was fueled by the kidnapping and killing of three Israeli teenagers and the revenge killing of a Palestinian teenager. In 2017, US President Donald Trump announced that the US would recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, after which violence and demonstration broke out in Gaza, the West Bank, and the several countries in the region. In 2020, Abraham Accord bilateral agreements between Israel and the UAE, Bahrain, and Morocco were signed to normalize relations. In 2023, Hamas militants breached a security fence between Gaza and Israel, with Hamas fighters gunning down Israeli civilians and taking hostages. The Israeli government ordered a complete siege of Gaza. So why is it difficult to resolve the Israel-Palestine conflict? With Israeli settlement, it is difficult to draw the line to demarcate two different nations. As you can see in the map, first solution to the problem was the UN partition plan of 1945, according to which 45% of the area was for the Arabs and 55% for Jews. In 1949, Israel occupied major portion of land and Palestine was confined to Gaza and West Bank. In 2017, Gaza is under Hamas and West Bank is partly controlled by Israel and partly by Palestine. Also, both sides claim Jerusalem as their capital and consider it as a center of religious worship and cultural heritage. In December 2017, Israel declared Jerusalem as its capital, which was soon recognized by US and Europe. The two-state solution proposed by UN is supported by Palestinian and West Bank, but the leadership under Hamas in Gaza does not even recognize Israel. Israel is against return of Palestinians who left their homes during the war. So now the next question is why Jerusalem is important for Israel. According to Hebrew Bible, in 1000 BC, King David established Jewish control over Jerusalem. King Solomon, son of King David, constructed the first temple of God in Jerusalem. City of Jerusalem fell in and out of many hands during the next couple of millennia. West wall of the first temple of God survived all the attacks. Western wall is a part of the wall surrounding the Dome of the Rock and Al-Aqsa Mosque. It's important to note out here that Western wall 
is a place of prayer and pilgrimage sacred to the Jewish people. Western Wall finally came under Jewish control in 1967. Now, why Jerusalem is important for Palestine? According to Quran, Jerusalem was also the last place the Prophet Muhammad visited before he ascended to the heaven and talked to God in the 7th century. Muslims believe Dome of Rock is the spot from where the Prophet Muhammad was taken up into heaven for an encounter with God. Dome of Rock and Al-Aqsa Mosque are situated within Haram al-Sharif, referred to as the furthest mosque. Dome of Rock and Al-Aqsa Mosque are located on the same spot where Temple of God was built by King Solomon in Old City of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is considered to be the holiest place for Muslims. Jerusalem is equally important for Christians. Bethlehem was the birthplace of Jesus. Nazareth was the place where he grew up. Jerusalem is the city that really matters to Christians. This was where Christ preached, ate the Last Supper with his disciples before his death. Jerusalem is the place where he was arrested, put on trial, crucified, and finally died. Church of Holy Sepulchre is built on the site of Jesus' crucifixion and burial. The war is on, and so are the peace efforts. Someone said it is coexistence or no existence. With this thought, I end the session. You can reach me at alkamya at gmail.com. Kindly do tune in for more such interesting stories and updates.